You're listening to the King of the Fort podcast, offering in-depth analysis on all things Boston Celtics with your hosts, Jim and Mike Quigley. Mike, trade deadline day. Um, Well, they made moves. You know, we said they better make moves. They made moves. Um, The moves they made were certainly interesting um, and surprising. Evan Fournier come came over from the Magic to Jeff Teague and two second round picks. Um, Daniel Tice, who I know we both love and we'll spend some time talking about, is gone, along with Javante Green for um, Mo Baza and uh, Luke Cornett, who apparently never ever plays because he sucks so bad. So so, uh, that's those are the deals that happened today. I think what we want to get into is the long-term impact because in the short-term impact, and I think it all centers around um, what it means for Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum going forward and how these decisions um, kind of punt some of the tougher decisions Danny needs to make when it relates to building a team around them until at the very earliest, the off season, I'm afraid it's even further down than that. And, um, you know, I, I don't know, where I am today, I don't know if this was a good day for the Celtics. I don't think it was. Some things that could happen, one thing in particular, which I could think makes it okay. Um, but where I, I'm sitting right now, I, I, all the things we talked about where they needed to make a deal to improve this team down the road, not just this season. I'm not saying it didn't happen, but it, it doesn't feel like it did. And, and I think there's a better chance that it didn't than it did. Um, so that's my initial takeaway before we get into the short-term stuff and we're going to get in, in depth on short-term, long-term, all that stuff. But Mike, what's, what's your initial kind of takeaway? Uh, yeah. Um, I was really taken back a little bit when I found out that the trade was just for Evan Fournier, uh, and at one o'clock, I, I, I was taken back by all of it. I couldn't believe Orlando was making trades at one o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Um, I don't know why Every they didn't. Day, I thought. On the whole. They had a good day in the hole, I think, from the Bulls trade. Um, but for what they got for Fournier and Aaron Gordon, I feel like you could have waited till three o'clock and and, and just see if you could have got gotten more. But uh, for for the Celtics, he's a good player. He, he's a good offensive player. I know the metrics are saying he's good defensively. Hopefully that's true. So in the short term, um, they got a guy who could start right away. I think that fits in with the starting unit. Uh, or he can come off the bench and smart and start. So I think he's going to help them win some games and score more points. He'll relieve Tatum and Brown minutes, which is huge. He's going to relieve Kemba minutes too, because he's good with the ball in his hand. Um, So that's great. Um, But I'm concerned that they're not going to sign him long-term, that he's not going to be here, that they look at it and they say, well, if he walks, we get the TPE and then we can use the TPE again. You only only get the TPE to sign a trade. So you don't just award that. So even yeah, so, that, that, that is no guarantee. Either. Yeah. That, that I mean, so I, I just, I don't know what the plan is. I don't know what their plan is. And, you know, Marcus Smart's contract's up at the end of next season. Um, I, you know, and the, 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 the crazy thought, part about today is like, Fournier helps you in the short term. So, it says to me, you're still trying to win some games in the playoffs. But then you take Daniel Tice and you move him, you get nothing in return. So it's like in one in one hand, you're saying we still want to compete. In the other hand, you're making That's, it harder for your team it, to win. It's actually why I'm a little hopeful. You know, there was an effort to get under the cap for, for uh, not the cap. Um, the tax. The tax and the cap and the cap. There was You had to get under the hard cap too. Um, to get, so you needed to get rid of either um, Tice or, or or like make another move. Tristan get, Thompson. Yeah, it wasn't big money to get under the hot cap, but they needed to do that. What it tells me when you, you kind of move on from those guys, so if you were all in on going as far as you could this year, you hang it on to Tice. Yeah. I'm, I'm hopeful, and I know Danny hasn't spoken to the media yet because this – Trades are still going through the league process. 
I'm hopeful that they've already begun talks with Fournier's agent and letting him know that he wants to be here. And they've heard something back that, you know, Fournier is interested in staying because then there is long-term benefit mm-hmm. to this deal. Then, then, you know, if you get him at 18 million for the next four years, and that's a going rate, people are going to lose their mind 18 to 20 million. But well, that's what he makes player. right now, right? Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's at the bare minimum going weight, weight rate for that position and for what he gives. So it shows that they would be willing to spend it to the tax. It, it, it will line right up with the timeline of the contracts of Tatum and Brown. Um, it becomes a tradable asset for a bigger trade. You, you know, yeah. so all those things. I will, if that happens, that I'm actually fine with this trade. As far as the short term, as I know we want to hit on that first. I, I do think this helps them. The Celtics actually, even though they're two and six since the break, which is um, just shocking to me that that's what their numbers are right now. They have been very good offensively. I, I think they've been the second best offensive team in the NBA since the All-Star break. Um, over the last three games in particular, they're, they're moving the ball quite well. Um, you know, they're finally getting paint touches, which is leading to open shots, which is, Fantastic. Yeah, I think if you add Evan Fournier into an offense that's been going pretty well for the last three to four games, it's 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 going to be really helpful. And the fact that he's a ball handler and can shoot the three and can relieve all your best four at different times, whether that's Tatum Brown or Osmata Walker, is really key. And he's a little bit bigger than I realized. And what you mentioned is his advanced stats show that he's a pretty good defender, particularly on the ball defender, which is another area where they've had some trouble. He's going to make them better. I, I, I have no doubt now that I believe with this move and with their other top four players all playing together, they're going to win more games than they lose for the rest of the year. Yeah, I think that Tice, um, that's going to be a big loss to the Celtics just as, you know, you're losing the guy who's good defensively. Uh, he's He has a really good rhythm when he's up there with Kemba Walker. They played so well together. Uh, but at the same time, I think, something as a Celtic fan that I've realized that this is going to open up more opportunities for Rob Williams. And that's probably more important. I, I hope that this, you know, allows Rob to start even when Thompson comes back because Rob's, yep. you know, I, Rob's really the, the third best player on the team. And sometimes he's the best player on the team, depending on the situation uh, with the defense that he brings and just the way he changes the game. And, and Tice ended up in a good place. Um, he's going to get a good amount of minutes in Chicago at the four and at the five. Um, His minutes are going to go down, but that team's going to compete now. Chicago got a really good, talented player. Offensively, they're going to be really good. That's something I want to say about the Fournier trade. You know, defense in the NBA is overrated because nobody plays defense. And you need talented scorers on your team in order to compete. You saw Dallas do it today. They they're a team that doesn't play any defense, and they added more scoring and less defense to their roster. They added two shooters out of New Orleans, and J.J. Redick and the other guy, the European kid who wasn't playing. Um, and, and what Fournier brings you is he, he brings you that, that skill that you need to survive in this league that the Celtics don't have on their bench. He's going to yeah. take the minutes away from Seth. He's going to take the minutes away from Grant. He's going to take minutes away that Jeff Teague had. He, he, Smith and it isn't going to see the floor. Carson Edwards, if he ever came back, he, he's not going to see the floor. Uh, this is a reliable scorer that's going to be out there. And hopefully, too, at the end of the games uh, where the Celtics struggle. You saw it last night. Marcus Smart was taking a lot of shots at the end of that game. Um, maybe you that can goes- almost go offense defense at times now with Fournier and, um, and a Walker or Fournier Smart, depending on how, how, how you want to mix it up, you know. Plays like this to win. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we talk about the three and D guys all the time and how, you know, you want guys who can, who are athletic wings, who can defend, but it, to an extent in the NBA, you need a lot of offense. You, it's an arms race to score the basket. Yeah. And I, I think you're right with the position the Celtics are in to compete for a title teams that compete for a title defend. It's, you know, but I agree where the Celtics are right now. You, you, they have so many holes. If you can improve upon this, and their offense is a strength, so make it stronger right now. They off, they've been playing really good offensive ball for four or five games, and it seems like things are finally clicking with 
as I said earlier, getting paid touches and finding open looks and things like that. Um, and I agree with you with Rob. It, it's going to open things up for him. It's going to force Brad's hand to play him more minutes and to give him run with the best players, which he hasn't had a lot of run with, with the best players. You know, his plus minus is not great for, on the team, but he's played with the bench, which has been, you know, he's had a surrounding cast, which has been terrible. So I, um, you know, for the short you know term, I think it's going to be okay. It'll be better. They're going to be better for the short term. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it all matters on their effort, too. Part of the reason they're in the place that they're in isn't just the talent on the team. The talent has a lot to do with it, the lack of talent. But the team's lack, lack of effort it, for long stretches of time, it just seeming like they don't care, is a real issue. And hopefully a trade of bringing in a guy that's, you know, pretty well known and a good scorer, may infuse some energy into this roster that desperately needs it. Uh, and they desperately need to start listening to their coach. And, you know, he, he's stressing to, to the team to move the ball, to trust each other more. I, I did like the Tice three at the end of the game yesterday. I, I, I like that they didn't just try to force it to Tatum or Brown. They gave it to the wide open guy. I thought the shot was going in. It looked like a good shot. Yep. Um, during the comeback, they were really moving the ball well. They were playing. I together. didn't. I didn't like the not using timeouts. But I thought Brad. Oh, by Brad. Yeah, yeah, I'm just talking about the effort by yeah. the Yeah. Oh, yeah. The effort. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, you're right. Yep. Sorry. The comeback. But yeah. the first half, I, I, or the third quarter, it was third the third quarter. quarter. Yeah. yeah. Like what? Kemba was the only guy trying, and then again, Brown had 14 points in the first quarter, and then just disappeared. And then at the end of the game, he didn't even touch the ball. Him yeah, well, he, he actually hit that big three. He had a couple really big threes in that fourth quarter comeback. And then he hit one with about two and a half minutes to go that got him He didn't down touch the ball after that. Two and then didn't get the ball after that. It, it, no Tatum. And, I, I, you know, yeah, you know, it, it was a tough ending. Look, the, the first three that Smart took was within the offense. They made a great was wide open. Wide open. Tice made a great read. Uh, then I thought Kemba got right, to the basket. Yeah, I thought he got hit in the head and, you know, and body and didn't get the call. And then the last possession was just a disaster until the Tice one second play. Um, but yeah, they should fight. They need to win one of them. They, they they need to stop winning one of these games. You know, I'm sick of saying they showed some fight. It's like it's frustrating. They need to win one of these games. Um, they need to win several of them. What would have helped was. There were other players on the market that potentially could have helped. You know, one of the guys, the Celtics were considered the front runner, I guess, whatever that means for the last couple of days was Aaron Gordon. He, he goes to Denver for a 2025 first round draft pick. Um, Highly protected. Yeah. Um, what's his name? Um, the guy. The, Ellie Harris, who never Gary plays. Harris and um, that Hummel. first round pick. Yeah. So From last year. It, it feels to me. Like, all right, you made the 48 trade earlier. So you don't have the TP. You could have matched salaries. I feel like you could have matched it with Marcus Smart. You know, you brought in 48 okay. at that position. And before people want to blow my head off about this, I, I just, you know, Smart hasn't had the best year. You come into a decision on him maybe this offseason if you want to actually get anything back anyways. I don't know if you would have got anything much better than Aaron Gordon. The, that's going to be available out there right now. The salaries almost match. You could have thrown him a first round pick, highly protected, 2025 or later, and Marcus Smart, and maybe a young player. And, and right now, they you would have wanted Aaron Neesman. And so I, I just, I'm trying to figure that one out. I, I guess that means they value Smart more than Gordon. And if that's the case, I, I hope that means they, you know, they're going to commit to him. I, I'll, I, I just – I don't value Smart more than Gordon. Um, I, I, I feel like Smart is at the point where he's not getting better anymore and some of the shooting numbers and things are diminishing. And, and we – as much as I love him and he's one of my favorite players, you're getting to a point where you got to make a decision on him. And maybe some new blood in here would have been the best thing. You know, you, so that that was interesting to me. I, I I guess you could have found another way to 
bring in Gordon too, but I don't think you could have matched what Denver offered if you if you're offering Actually, Tristan if you were going to move stuff. Tice. If yeah. you knew you were going to move Tice, it would have made sense to have Gordon instead of Smart just for your roster. Go- I, I just feel like Gordon's going to a place now in Denver with a really good coach, just like he would have had in Boston. And I feel like what you're going to see is somebody's going to tap into that talent, and we're going to we're going to watch this player develop down in Denver, I mean, like sounds- all the young players in Denver do. It sounds like this was his preferred destination too. You know what you were hearing that Gordon. But I think in up. hindsight, he's going to be happy where he ended up. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm sure he is too. But you, you know, it's it's moving to the you know other side of the country and all those things. It sounds like his preferred destination was up here. Uh, maybe he has a relationship with the guys up here, but it didn't happen. I found it curious. Um, the it's not really a money. At first, I thought it was a money issue, but if you start looking at, they'd have to match, and the contract it's way, it's not, it's not a money lines issue. up anyways. So that one didn't happen. Um, I think I would have made that move on second guess. Uh, Is there any chance that Orlando wanted Gary Harris instead of Smart? Is there something with Harris's contract that they can get out of it sooner? Or? The only thing I was thinking on that is they thought maybe maybe they thought with Smart they'd win more games this year. Yeah, well, they are tanking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and – Harris, I don't think they'd prefer Smart to Harris. Harris looks cooked. Well, I was saying contracts. I don't know. Is Harris only have one Harris, year and he's gone? Harris, Harris actually costs more. I think he's closer to 20. He's under, he's under for more than just this year? I don't know about that. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was wondering, because if he's in a walk here, maybe that's more appetizing. Well, he, to he, all the reports out there are saying they wanted Smart, and there was enough people reporting that. So it sounds like the Celtics weren't willing to go there. And, you know, the Celtics also weren't willing to go beyond a first round pick, um, which. Sounds again, like Denver wasn't either though. Yeah. Again, you know, maybe that's correct. Maybe if other GMs are, are evaluating Gordon this way, maybe he's not worth more than that. I, I think. I, I don't know if that's it. Go. I think part of it is Gordon couldn't keep his mouth shut for a couple of days. And kind of screwed the magic by demanding a trade. <laughs> yeah, I, maybe that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they I, lost I, a lot of leverage there. I mean the other thing they could have done is they could have went Thompson and, you know, Pritchard, or I think they probably preferred Neesmith, and, and thrown a couple first round picks and see what Denver said. That was yeah. the other other route they could have went. That was so. And that seems like that would beat Denver's deal. Yeah, if you had a second, it feels like a second first round pick beats Denver's deal. Yeah, it does. And I don't know if, if, if it was there and Danny decided not to, because he wants to hold on to his picks. I think that's a mistake. I well, really that's, do. that's where I was wondering if it was money, you know, is this, does, is he getting a, is he, is Wick telling him that you can only spend so much? I, you know, once you get into 20 million on the cap, it becomes 60 million. Once it's 30 million, it becomes 90 million. So. Somebody ask. Yeah, so it, that needs to be asked. Is there, a, and I'm sure there's, there's got to be a budget, right? Every business has a budget. So what is it? And if, you know, those draft picks are cost control. They're cost control. And they're cheap. And you can plug them in. And you hope you get lucky. So maybe that was part of it here. Do championship teams have... A different budget than everybody else. So when you see consistently the Miami Heat, the LA Lakers, it was the Cleveland Cavaliers. Spent in, in a while. Huh? The Heat haven't spent into the tax for a long time. Well, they haven't. No. All right. Yeah. Uh, and here's, here's the other thing with this too. Like, just keep this in mind. They all these NBA teams are receiving quite a big tax actual federal tax break because of the trump tax cuts so they're they're, they're making more money that way and wick for whatever he bought the team for it's worth what 20 times more than what it was when he was so they're making a ton of money is my point and so as the the consumer of this product i want to see them invest in it And, and right now 
the fucking money. I'm having questions. And I, I think we, to me, the answer of I'm willing to pay into the tax if we're a championship contender isn't good enough right now because you're not that and you're not going to be that anytime soon. But you, yet you have two young guys that you need to stop building around before they're, they're not going to be here. No. Before and and they could demand trades early if they don't like it here. Exactly. You know, and usually that happens two years before the contract's up. And that's here quicker than you think. That's 2023 when the free agent market opens up. I, I, I think, you know, those questions need to be asked about how far into this tax are you willing to go? Because they're going to go into it next year. There's no way they can avoid it next year unless they find someone to completely take Kemba's salary and they don't take anything back. I don't know how you do they, that. They have to spend into the tax to compete. And if they if they're gonna throw away seasons and they're not gonna support this, well, it's, not even, it's, it's not even to compete, Mike. They they are um they have eleven guys under contract. When Jason Tatum's extension kicks in, they are a million dollars under the tax or two million dollars under the tax next year before they make any moves. So just signing minimum guys is gonna get you into the tax to fill out your roster. So they're in. There's no – that's what I mean. Unless they find someone to just take Kemba's contract off their hands completely, they're, they're in. That makes me feel like there's a good chance they're not going to re-up Evan Fournier. Well, that's that's, that's, that's a big concern. Yeah. That's my point. A, like, this deal works if you re-up him. If he walks for nothing, this, this shows that this is – to me, this is an ownership group that's more concerned about the finances than building around their two young stars. And if that's true, then they're going to regret it. Because if you're watching all the Boston sports teams right now, Mookie Betts out the door, David Price out the door, Tom Brady gone, you're going to support your best players to compete. And it's really, it's really annoying in a market like Boston to see teams not want to invest like that. And the Celtics should because they have two young stars who we don't know if they can be top five players because they're so young. Yeah, and they, and they, it and would they, suck to find out that they are somewhere else. And they both say they want to be here. They really want to be they here. They always do. Yeah, but they, I mean, they've dug in pretty good. You know, they've said all the right things. They act and behave like they want to be here. So so build your team like they want to be here. Because pretty When's soon. Bradley Bale up? Because if you don't show them, yeah, well, that maybe that's it. But yeah, when's he a free agent? Because that that'll that'll really well, show the, us. the time to trade for him would be this offseason. If that, if you don't show them that, eventually they're going to come to the determination that you just said, and, and at that point you get diminishing. You might get diminishing returns. The other thing too, like as we talk about this team, what I always felt good about this Celtics team, and I think I tell you every offseason. Okay, yeah, maybe this guy leaves or this team makes this best thing the Celtics have going for him is that Tim and Brown, the room for her growth is there. That's getting to a point where that's going to end and they're going to just become who they are as all stars, which is going to be very, very good. But we're getting close to that kind of plateau area where we get to know who they are and they just build on little things each offseason. Yeah. And, and so, the room for growth internally is getting smaller than it has been before. So as I, I look at long-term, I, I just see in order for them to become a championship team, it, this flexibility is gone. So they need to get really lucky with like a number 24 pick or a number 20 pick that becomes like a quad Lenny, which never happens. So you, you got to get extremely lucky. or you, And you got to hope that Tatum and Brown – develop into a top five and top 10 to 15 player, both of them. Then you got to hope you get Kemba Walkers off the books and, and you get something in return and that you're still competitive with these guys. And by 2023, you're back in the free agent market enticing a really good player to come here. Or you figure out a way this off season to trade for Bradley Bill. And I, I think that got hotter right now. So I, I, all these things, and not to mention the, the market smart decision I think has to happen this off season. Either you're committing to him or you, you're finding a suitor, you know, so it could have happened today. You could have, you could have made a really painful decision during a, for a bad team today, but they punted on that or, or they committed to him. 
So, Wouldn't his value be more at the trade deadline next year than this offseason? A full year of him or a half year? I don't know. Half year contending team. Maybe. That's close. You know, I, I, don't I don't know. I don't know. What is his value on the market? I don't know if you're going to get better than you got today. Yeah. I, I just don't know that. You know, what a, he's – what do teams think of him right now? You know, he, things are starting to yeah. off, you know. I want to talk about Tatum and Brown just for a second. Jimmy, I think it was probably like six or seven podcasts ago. You asked me how many championships, what's their window for these two? And I said one. And you said zero. Is that something you really believe? Yeah, I, I think even if all things go correct, it's such a hard thing to accomplish that it's probably zero. Um, but they're capable of one if all things go correct. So which one of them are you moving to get a championship? I'll build them around them. I'm rolling my dice with them. I don't think you're moving one to get a championship. You're you're either getting equal value or you're getting less if you move one of these guys. Um, or you're getting pieces. You know, look, if they find a way well, with these two and you the best thing that could happen to the Celtics, and we've been saying this all year, is that Kemba finds some way to find himself between now and the end of the year. In his last 20 games, he looks like an all-star again. And you can all of a sudden start trying to package him in to a Bradley Beal deal in a three-team trade or something like that. Maybe you include Marcus Smart. And you find a way to make Beal part of the, the Tatum-Brown. I mean, that that is the dream scenario. It's extremely unlikely in my mind. Oh. But that's the dream scenario. Yeah, so dream that's scenario is come to be like a championship team. Dream scenario aside, yeah. If you have a re- legitimate chance to get Bradley Beal using Jalen Brown, would you consider that this offseason? Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I, I just no. I, 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 I want to show these two that I'm building around them. And that's a direction. I don't think it gets. I only brought it up because you said their window's zero. I, 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 just... I, would, I, I would think about it. I, I just. I would think about it in the sense of one way I maybe would lean that way if I if I feel like Jason Tatum would prefer that and be with his best friend and you can build around that. Um, so I, I'm not going to dismiss it out of hand. But I think no. I think no. Yeah, I. You know how much I love Jalen Brown because I see him as somebody in Boston that after his career is more than a basketball player. I, I love the guy. Um, so that's a. It's just a legitimate thing to bring up. But I. I look at Tatum and Brown, and I don't know if Bale would be like the third guy. You know, I don't know who that Kevin Garnett player is that's out there in the NBA. Uh-huh. Well, but I feel team. like I feel like they need the two of them need like a leader. I think like, Bill uh, could be that. Bill seems like a really good guy, uh, and he's he's played on a lot of bad teams. He's made a ton of money. Um, I think at this point he's just going to want to win. Um, so I I disagree with that. I think Bill could be that type of leader and that type of guy. He seems like he's beloved on on a bad Wizards team right now by his teammates, um, but. I don't know. It's probably a pipe dream to even think the Celtics have what it takes to get him. Yeah, unless they, unless they move Brown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's you know the other moves that happened. Yeah, I know there's some consternation oh, yeah. from fans about Vucevic. I don't want to give two first rounds or three first round picks to Sana. I just oh don't. no, not for us. I, I feel like it was a good move for Chicago though. And yeah, I felt like it was good for both teams. And yeah. I felt it was better for Orlando, frankly. But um, I thought it was good for Chicago, too. I think Chicago needs to show um, their young star, Zach Levine, Levine, that they're committed to winning. And I, I think that's did this today. Yeah, and I think offensively, that's a really skilled team now. I mean, they have White coming off the bench. They have Thaddeus Young. They still have Laurie Malkinen. Uh, you got, obviously, uh, a top five scorer in the nba zach levine i mean the guy he he's just the ability to score and quite frankly probably the third best center skill wise in the nba after mb and uh the kid in denver is 
is what Chicago has now. Well, Anthony Davis too, if you consider him a center. Yeah. Oh, I guess yeah, right. If you consider him a center, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, Vucevic is very, very good. Um, I don't Portland think he got would, better today. You know, if he was that good, his team wouldn't. You know, with the skill players he has around him now, they wouldn't be as terrible as they are. Uh, you just you don't win with guys that play that position and can't really defend. And you know, he's he's good. Yeah, Tice for that. But, yeah, I wonder how much Tice <laughs> is going to play with Markinen and him there. I, you said it was a good spot for him. I actually thought for a guy going into free agency, it was like the worst possible. Spot. Oh, what's just a matter of time before Laurie gets hurt again? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, obviously, Miami got better today. Um, I think of how much better they got. Perkins doesn't but, think so. Well, he's got a point. You know, Oladipo hasn't played well in two years. So if he can be what he was two years ago, it's a really good trade. It's a, it's a kick-ass trade. I think the um, underrated team. The handle it either way. So. I think the underrated team that got a lot better today was Portland. I know they yeah. gave up Gary Trent. Um, oh, I love Noam Powell. Love yeah, him. He, yeah, very good defensively. Um, he's taller than Gary Trent. He's going to be the starting small forward. And then they they got um, Nurkic back, so your boy Ennis Kanta is going to be going to the bench. Um, they they got a lot better today. That's a that's a good team down in Portland. Yeah, they did they did a good job. And um, you know, I even thought Philly made a sneaky good trade with George Hill. You know, they needed a point guard. They didn't give up. You know, a ton of assets for a half year of Kyle Lowry, and you know, so I didn't think I didn't think that deal was bad either for Philly. Idols playing for that team right now defensively, shutting everybody down. Yeah, and they got better. They even got better at that today. I mean, Hills long and defend multiple positions. Um, you know, and I know a lot of talk, and it's fun to talk about. So I'm willing to talk about it. Is the bio market? Um, and well, I, I think. think Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think realistically, Drummond and Aldridge are not coming to Boston. I think they're. I wouldn't I, I, Drummond. I think they're both going to the Western Conference. I I don't think there's going to be a huge market for Drummond. I think the Lakers are going to be on. I guess they could. Yeah, I just don't think he. I don't know. White Howard, man, he's there. He's there. He's the backup to Anthony Davis. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe the Lakers go after him. That would be a decent spot for him. Outside of the Lakers, I don't think there's much of a market for Andre Diamond out there. I really don't. I, I, I think he doesn't fit in Brooklyn at all. No, he doesn't. He's classic. Claxton's playing well now. And actually, DeAndre Jordan's having a good season. Yeah, like what are you going to have? Two DeAndre Jordans and so two guys that can't get out on Embiid? They you have Claxton playing, man. He's... Yeah, I, I just – in Milwaukee would just destroy them. From the three with their centers, if it was Jordan and uh, and Drummond, I, I so I, I I don't know I, Lakers, I could see that. Um, I agree. Who is the other guy? I, I oh, I think Aldridge is Miami. I think that's a done deal. It sounds like from all accounts. Um, yeah, I, I, I didn't hear about that because I've been here in Portland too. Yeah, it sounds like it's a done deal with Miami. Um, so, I you know I again. For the Celtics, uh, for Miami, I think it's a really good move. For the Celtics, I, I don't know if this would have been the best fit for him. Yeah, if he gets yeah. – I know you don't think he's coming here, but if he gets bought out, I know he's got a bad back and he's put weight on and he's had a bad season this year, but I do think Otto Porter would be a good fit with the Celtics. Well, he here's can, the thing. He could stick the three. He always could do that. Oh, yeah, I I, I, I would love him. I'd love him if, like, they're going to buy someone out. He'd be at the top of my list. Yeah, so I don't disagree with you. I'm just wondering what his motivations are. Is his motivation to get another contract? Because he seems like that type of guy to me. So is he going to go to like some middling team? Maybe that's a seller, but maybe he sees Tatum and Brown in the way in Fournier, and he's like, fuck that. And is he going to go somewhere where he can get minutes and get back? go to the Pistons. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's it's like TJ Warren's up in the TJ Warren's up for the year. Does he go to the Pacers and says, you know, I can help you guys get to the playoffs? I, I don't know. Um, he reminds me of that guy. Remember that guy, Danielle Marshall, I think his name was? Yeah. Yeah. Or like yeah, Rodney yeah. Rogers. <laughs> but if his motivation is to win a championship, he's going to Brooklyn. <laughs> so it's like, that's, that's, that's how I feel. Um, I know you're going to disagree with me. I, if we're going to, 
first of all, the Celtics might not even get a buyout if um, they got to waive a player to get to make sure they're under that tax line. His name's Carson Edwards. Yeah, well, uh, I, it sounds like it would be that guy Cornette from everything I'm reading. Um, and I guess they're going to hold on to him initially because they're so thin up front until Thompson comes back. Um, yeah, Paco. So, so I, I, I actually think Kelly Olenek wouldn't be a bad move. He knows the team. He knows the system. You're looking for a guy that can spread the floor a little bit. Um, he's immediately better than most of your second group. Um, and uh, you know, I'm not going to say what I call him and his nicknames. Uh, yeah, I don't, don't want the Me Too movement coming on our show. Well, he, he I do he, not want that guy. Traditional defense, he does. If we're talking for the last traditional, what do you, what about his defense? What do you have to say about his mm-hmm. defense? He's, he knows where to go. <laughs> oh, he knows where to go. Yeah. It, so 30 games left. And here's the thing with the buyout. I already kind of hate this team. I'd rather stick needles through my eyes than watch fucking Kelly Olenek again. But, but here's the thing with the buyout is usually you're going to get a player that sucks. Usually. You know, the Blake Griffin, Blake Griffins, the PJ Browns are the exceptions. Usually you get no. Troy, usually you get Troy Mo- Murphy or Greg Monroe. That's Stephon what you Marbury. Get. Stephon Marbury. Usually that's what you get. So, I, I mean... What about Avery Bradley? I don't he gets think bought out. Gonna, I don't think he's going to want to get bought out. He's got a a player option for five and a half million, and he may never make that again. So he may look at them and be like, "No, I'm going to stay, <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm going to opt in. <laughs> and I'm going to opt in, and I'm going to make another five and a half million, and you're going to pay me. Yeah, and there's nothing you can do about it. I, I that's what I would do. <laughs> so, you're probably right. It's going to be fucking yeah. Kelly Olynyk. Which is oh, better than what they have. What a cap on this year with Kelly O. He did have that game seven. He did. He did have that game seven. Oh, um, David Celtic this victories. Yeah, that was a great night. That was a fun. That was a fun team. What um, never happened if John Wall didn't hit that shot in game six? I know. I know. That was a great series. That was. A, I mean, it was it was great, but also predictable because the home team just won every game. But it was still a good series. It was good. Um, yeah. So the Celtics had a big decision to make. I don't feel like they, they made it today um, in terms of long-term, short-term, whatever. I'm just going to enjoy Short-term, it. Short-term, they're in big trouble Friday because who knows who will be on the roster. Yeah. Um, hopefully Milwaukee gets cocky and sits Middleton and Giannis. <laughs> well, <laughs> how about this? They got to defend threes with the Milwaukee, with Portis and Lopez, with – Rob Williams and Taco Fall. <laughs> Man, Bobby Portis, what a pickup by Milwaukee this offseason. Yeah. I think he's like, I don't think he's making much money. That, I mean, what a solid player. He finally, he found a team where he, he fits in. But uh, yeah, short term for the Celtics. Um, OKC made some trades, so maybe their off their roster will be a little messed up on Saturday on the back to back because that feels like the must win this week going into OKC. I worry that like Al Horford's going to play and drop like forty two points, um, but I think this week they have to they have to win the uh, the OKC game because then they would leave the week two under. If they lose to OKC, I feel like they're going to be four games under five hundred going into Sunday. Yeah, and and, well, hopefully, 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 twenty is available then. And That's what um, I'm saying. yeah, hopefully, yeah. hopefully, all the guys they traded for are available by Saturday. Yep. Yeah, that That's would good. actually be good, you know, because then you're playing fresh guys going into OKC. Yeah, yeah, I, I think, like I said, I think they're going to win more than they lose. I think they're going to be better. They are going to be better. Um, how week, much better? I don't know. Next week, schedule wise, the teams they're playing, we've already been through this. They should win. Oh. Um. You never fucking know with these guys, but next week it, it next week's the week where you could get your rhythm going. So, as a Celtic fan, we have to really hope that next week is when they start their winning streak. So, so here's here's what I would close with, and I would tell Celtics fans: try to do your best to enjoy the rest of this year as tough as it's been, <laughs> because this off season is going to be interesting. And um, if they go in one direction. Um, where they're not re-signing Fournier and they're trying to do everything to stay under the 
uh, tax line, it could be an indicator that uh, uh, years are limited with our two young staffs. So this podcast is going to be talking about the lottery plays. Yep. All right, guys. Well, with that, trade deadline show is over. This was a special trade deadline show. I hope you feel special about it. Ha, ha, ha.